Hi guys, hope you're all well and welcome back to another market breakdown video. So um, it's been a fairly slow start to the week where we haven't seen many high probability setups as of yet. Um, obviously we had lower volume than usual yesterday with the Japanese and the UK bank holidays. Um, and then we did see um, a little bit of volatility in the markets this morning that was due to the Australian dollar cash rate release uh, which remained unchanged so that actually did create some Australian dollar strength um, and a lot of those gaps that we saw on market open which were fairly significant have now been filled so um, the statistics that a gap will always be filled is true um, it's just down to the time it takes to fill them a lot of people speculate that the gaps are going to be filled you know within a matter of hours or, or days sometimes it can take a little bit longer than that um, but we have seen a lot of these market gaps now filled um, and then a new direction in play so um, one other thing to mention is that obviously we have the New Zealand dollar uh, cash rate release at 3 a.m. GMT on Wednesday morning as well. That will create some volatility and uh, it's always best to make sure that if you are in any Kiwi pairs that you're managed and protected. So on Thursday we've also got Powell speaking for the Fed. Um, that usually creates a bit of volatility as well. And then on Friday uh, we've got the Australian dollar monetary policy statement followed by some pound news, the GDP release, and then followed by some Canadian dollar um, news at 1.30 GMT and also some US dollar news at 1.30 GMT as well. So um, quite a busy week still, lots going on. Um, if we have a look at the DXY, you can see that we are in this ascending channel now and obviously at the end of April where we saw some profit taking we did actually print a new high so with a new high we can expect a new higher low um, and what I quite like about this is that taking a fib from this low uh, to this high you can see that the D1 extension of our Fibonacci lines up really nicely with the level of 99 so what we're looking for here is a pullback and then a possible reversal back up into the high. Now it just all depends on how deep of a pullback we can have um, and can we see some continued dollar weakness into the week that might push this down certainly to the level of 97 going into next week. Um, can we see it breach this level and fall any lower? I don't know, uh, it would be nice because if we did get a nice rejection out of the FIB and from this long term ascending uh, trend line, um, that would give us some nice long opportunities um, to buy the dollar throughout the rest of the month. So definitely one to watch. Um, and at the moment you can see that we have had quite a strong day for the dollar in general. Um, but I don't think that this kind of retracement here from this high to here is deep enough. I definitely can see us coming down um, and test this level here, but possibly this level down here as well. So keep an eye on the dollar index. Um, Euro dollar. Euro dollar is obviously falling today with the strength of the DXY. They're heavily correlated. Um, but you can see that we're in this m lovely bearish um, play overall and um, having printed a new low here um, we can expect a new higher low to be formed now I'm not sure whether or not this is the new high low um, as you can see here I have actually got a fib taken from this wick up here to this wick down here and price has interacted with the 0.16 Fibonacci level um, but I just I'm, I'm not convinced that this is the new higher low. I think that price could actually pull back a little bit deeper into this level, um, interact with this kind of descending trend line as well, and then roll over from there. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely sort of looking for a new leg to unfold here and uh, take out these lows and um, 
you know, see how kind of deep of a pullback we can get before looking to sell. There is actually, um, there was a selling opportunity on this. It just wasn't, the, the probability wasn't that high. Um, and you can see here that we have actually broken. There was like a level there, which we broke. Um, so we could look for a retest and then continuation. Um, but the highest probability setup would be a deeper push into the Fibonacci level, into the Fibonacci pocket, um, possibly interact with this trend line, as I say, and then roll over from there. Um, GBPUSD, again, GBPUSD at the moment is bullish. We are in a phase two retracement stage, um, and this high here has taken out this level here, so we have actually printed a new high. So we're looking to uh, enter the market um, at the start of the new phase. So you can see here we've got this, uh, I've just put on this sort of counter trend line here, which we're now interacting in and around with. Now you can see that this purple level is a very strong level of liquidity and interest for this pair. Now that would be in and around the psychological price point of 1.3050 and we are, as you can see, in and around the area at the moment. Now what we could look for is a rejection out of this level um, which would interact with the counter trend line, the FIB and also an added confluence of the psychological price point of 1.3050 and then we can look to take this higher definitely out uh, up to the outer structure of this channel which is actually getting squeezed. We're using this kind of uh, grey long-term ascending trend line as dynamic resistance for this as well. So you can see here, we've taken it from these lows, which was supporting price, and uh, it has actually rejected that from this very, very large bullish engulfing um, on the 3rd of May. So yeah, let's see how price reacts. Um, around this level here of 1.3050, see if we can get signs of deacceleration, um, and if this four-hour candle closes uh, as a spinning top or a doji or something, then we can look for uh, similar price action and then look for bullish confirmation to take this long. Um, but I can definitely see another leg to the upside unfolding on GBP USD. Uh, GBP CAD, obviously this was a signal that was posted in the VIP group. Um, so this was taken off the back of multiple confluences. So number one, this high here um, took out this level here. So we had a change in market structure. So you can see here that we were bearish. So we were creating um, high lows, lower lows, and then this uh, area here took out this kind of area so we have created a new market structure so then what we looked for is uh, somewhere to buy from now obviously having such an explosive uh, push to the upside we were naturally waiting for a pullback now we had a nice pullback into this area here into the Fibonacci golden pocket which does meet up nicely with the counter trend line the psychological level of 1.70550, which is here, um, which we broke, and it looks like we're coming back to retest this level here. Now, um, we did actually enter slightly premature, um, but that was because if we have a look at the one hour chart, there was signs of bullish price action, um, in and around the level of 1.7600. So we had these wicks to the low, bullish price action, rejecting the uh, 618 Fib. So that kind of did look like a reversal that we were going to then start to push to the upside. Uh, we have since fallen. Um, and obviously because of the Canadian dollar and oil correlation, um, I don't think this has helped it. But I think that we could start to see or I hope to see some signs of a rejection of this level here, and then we can look to take this higher. Um, out of all of the sterling pairs, this was my favorite setup, just due to the multiple confluences that we had in place here. And then also uh, to finish the D1 extension lines up beautifully with this 
um, long term resistance level. So if we have a look at the daily chart, you can see how powerful this resistance level of 1.7795 is for this pair. So we can definitely look to target that, um, which does provide us with around, you know, it's sort of like a 200 pip trade. So uh, not bad. I mean, even if we target the previous high, still 150 odd pips. So a nice trade if that pulls off. Um, so as you can see here, this is dollar yen, and we have seen um, a lot of Japanese yen strength over the last couple of hours due to the equity sell-off. So, um, yeah, I mean, we may have missed an opportunity um, today, but there could be further opportunities to sell this pair um, for the rest of the week. So what we can do is drop down to the smaller time frames, and um, if we take out this low here, it's kind of double bottom um, on the four hour. If we take out this low, then we can simply wait for a pullback and then we can look to enter um, UJ using our one hour intraday strategy, which I'm sure you're all aware of. Um, doesn't leave us with a huge amount of downside targets, but you know if we target uh, the monthly level of 110, um, we can wait for a pullback and we can certainly look to get in on a 30 40 pip trade if uh, if the opportunity presents itself obviously we are um heavily bearish on this pair now and um i'm not sure whether or not this gap is going to get filled just yet because uh of the overall price action that i'm looking at here um we're actually now trading below this trend line as well so we may come back just to retest this level and then continue to roll over um, but yeah there's still some nice short opportunities on this pair um, going into uh, the next few days so definitely one to watch um, dollar Swiss we had some really nice signs of um, short on this pair. Actually, if we have a look at the daily first, you can see why. So we had this um, fairly explosive move to the upside, uh, this long kind of bullish leg, and then we had several days of deceleration and uh, market indecision. We had doji, doji, spinning top, doji, doji. We had this candle which pretty much took out this uh, this sort of resistance support here and then we wicked back up to the upside and then what it looked like is sort of a bit of a fake out move and then price was going to continue going down it did and we still had several wicks to the high which was suggesting selling pressure coming back in um, and then obviously due to the equity selling off and uh, a, a weakening of the Swiss franc this has um, exploded back up. So I still favor this to come down. The reason is we've made a new high and with a new high we can look for a new higher low. So I will be looking for this pair to come down um, to kind of test and interact with this trend line and also the Fibonacci pocket. So definitely one to watch as well. Obviously we've got um, a, a nice kind of um, correlation and confirmation from our DXY analysis that this is going to fall lower and also if we're going to be looking to sell USD JPY um, that would also correlate with selling this pair as well but due to the Japanese yen and Swiss franc correlation um, it's a bit of a tricky one but just going from a technical standpoint we've made a new high we're looking to um, you know we're looking for this pair to fall back, create a new higher low, and then we can see what um, what confirmation we've got if we do pull back into this area here. Um, but short term, you know, if we get a break below, if we get a break back below this level here, um, or even to 
let's look at it from there. So if we get a break back below this cancer trend line and also this highlighted area here, we can look for a break, retest, and continuation. Again, um, if we get that sort of um, price structure, then we can look to take a short using the one hour time frame. Um, not my favorite setup, I must admit, because we have now broken above this trend line. But if we do um, start to fall back down, we can kind of treat that as a bit of a fake out move. And then we can look to take the short again off a break, retest, and continuation. Um, Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar. Now, looking at daily time frame, you can see that we had this huge bearish leg um, for quite some time before breaking above the supporting trend line and then popping its head above quite a key price point for this pair, so um, the level of 1.0600 um, does act as a significant level for this pair. Now, having broken above this level and then coming back down, um, we're now interacting, we can actually put a counter trend line in here, so from this low to this low. Um, this does look like a new high low is unfolding here, so um, this pair has caught my attention, but obviously with the news tomorrow morning, um, and then with the Australian dollar news on Friday, um, it's probably best just to kind of sit on the sideline and just see how this plays out. Um, obviously they're heavily correlated between one another, I won't go into the reasons fundamentally why, but um, this is kind of sparking an interest for me, and um, if we can just, just keeping this simple, if we can kind of find a valid entry to go long on this pair, we can definitely target um, this area here, which again is the next institutional liquidity zone for this pair around 1.0900, okay? So and that does actually meet with this nice long-term FIB move from this high taken to this uh, the, the bottom of this spike here, the low of this spike. You can see that we are now um, in a corrective phase back up into the fib zone so we can look to take a long if the opportunity presents itself and then we can use the fib pocket as a target so it's as simple as that but as I say probably best just to um, spectate see what happens and if we can find a valid entry possibly going into um, the third week of May and then um, yeah we've got some nice upside potential so you know there's sort of 200 to 250 pips worth of upside potential here on this pair. Um, CAD Swissy. CAD Swissy has now invalidated a technical setup and the reason for that is that um, we failed to make a new high um, and we have got this head and shoulders or had this head and shoulders formation, shoulder, head, shoulder and the multiple kind of um, rejections off this level here. Um, we broke the neckline, which is due to the gap. Um, so that didn't hold as much weight to it as just a continuation of normal price action. Um, we have since filled the gap and we've now broken above this counter trend line, which for me has invalidated the move because not only have we broken above the counter trend line, we're now above the Fibonacci pocket. Um, however, we have come back to retest this level once again. So, it's on the watch list, this pair. It's just not my favorite setup. Um, I was really interested in selling this if we got a rejection um, from this level, or, or even the, you know, the most um, conservative kind of entry would have been a break and then retest of the neckline. So if we got that move there, first confirmation would of course be the rejection off this counter trend line and um, the reversal out of the Fibonacci pocket. So that's number one. Number two would have been a break retest of this neckline and then we could look to enter the market um, here on the continuation. So something like that. 
Um, probably targeting this uh, outer structure here on the ascending trend line. But yeah, it, uh, the technicals are currently invalidated, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, but yeah, if you have a look at the daily chart here, sorry, I probably should should have started on the daily to begin with, to be honest. Um, you can see the price is getting squeezed. You know, there's no real clear direction. I mean, it, it kind of is bearish overall. You know, we're failing to break above this level here multiple times, multiple rejections of this level of resistance. So um, I do favor downside. It's just how we apply our kind of technicals and enter the market in the safest way possible. Um, Euro Swissy, uh, still, I think I'll stop this for actually up there, one for four. Still a valid setup, although we have experienced quite some drawdown today and uh, we got very, very close to our stop loss. Um, I think stops were placed just above this high here. Um, so. This again does look like market manipulation to me and looks like a fake out move. So if this four hour candle closes like that, um, then that will give us further confirmation that uh, potentially this short opportunity is still valid. Now, um, the reasons behind taking this were pretty simple. Um, we here you can see failing to make a new high, um, prices reversing out of the Fibonacci pocket, which was taken from all the way over here, this high to this low, um, consolidating a little bit. We drove down, we then had an impulsive move up, and now we're looking to short this into the next corrective phase. Now you see this level here, this blue highlighted zone, um, has acted as such a strong level of resistance. That, coupled with the fact that we were out, coming out of the Fibonacci pocket, um, with the bearish price action was enough to take this short. So we had a rejection, what we were looking for is another third rejection, third drive into this counter trend line, and then take it short. Um, we had these two, let me just remove that for a second. You see here, we had these two lovely wicks to the high. Um, that looked like the price was going to reverse from here. We then just kind of ranged in within a 20, 25 pip range um, for quite a bit. And then, of course, we've had um, the moves of the weak Swiss franc today, which has subsequently pushed this up higher. Now, we're still in the, we're still in the market, we're still in the trade even. And uh, as I say, I reiterate, if this does um, start to fall lower and, and close in this kind of manner, then the trade is still valid. Um, and for those of you that aren't in this, you could enter on a retest. You could enter on a retest. Of this counter trend line here. If we got that move, obviously what you could say is that if price failed to take out this low this early on, then technically there's no direction for this pair. So really the best way to enter, if you're prepared to wait, would be that there. So a break retest and then continuation and that way we'd, we would have taken out this low here which would then um, provide us with further confirmation that this is going short because we've now got a bearish structure so um, euro New Zealand dollar this was on the watch list um, but I'm not interested in shorting this pair at the moment um, I know that some of you were looking at this, so I'm just going to cover it quickly. Um, so basically, keeping this simple, we had um, a breakout of this counter trend line first and foremost. So break of structure, came back to retest this level here. Um, 
it looked like it was rejecting it. Um, it did reject it, and then it uh, did retest it once more. We had the Australian dollar news as well this morning, um, and due to the Kiwi and Australian dollar correlation, there was um, a little bit of New Zealand dollar weakness, which then has pushed this slightly higher. You can see here on the daily candle that we've got this doji. So if that closes like that, again, a market indecision, it doesn't know what direction it wants to go in. But for me, it's just um, there's just no kind of confirmation where it's going. So um, there's no valid entry at the moment. But yeah, you can see that we're um, still within the fib kind of pocket. Until we break above the 0.786, then this still does have potential to reverse and continue going down. But I think what we might have to do is just be patient and um, wait for this level here, the level of like 1.67, yeah, 1.67. So if we can fall and then break below this level here, taking out this low, then again, we can wait for a retest and then look to go short. And that's probably the safest way to enter um, on this pair now. So definitely keep that in mind. I'm not really interested now till we potentially break below this level. So yeah, that's uh, Euro New Zealand dollar. Um, Euro Yen, I'll cover this quickly. Um, so yeah, we've got this nice bearish structure here. Um, it looked like we may pull back into the FIB and uh, have further drive into the counter trend line before rolling over. Um, but due to the yen strength today, we've basically just melted to the downside. So um, I still think there's going to be some nice opportunities to short this peg um, going into next week. Um, similar to UJ, what we need to wait for is um, a pullback and then look to enter the market upon a decent pullback. We can either enter um, on the four hour, maybe off the 20 MA, or a possible uh, retest of this monthly level here of 124, or we can drop down to the one hour time frame and apply our intraday strategy and look to enter the market off the 20 MA as well. So very, very simple on EJ. Gold here. Now, um, gold is playing up a little bit because what I would have hoped for is that last week we had this um, kind of reversal from these lows around here of like one of like 1270. I thought that we were going to drive um, into this region here, um, which it looked like we were going to do. And then we got to around like 1287, 1288 and we reversed. Now, again, due to what's happening with the equities, and um, you know, gold being a safe haven, it does look like there's some liquidity coming back into gold. And we may actually see that final drive up into this level here of around 1295 into the fib pocket, retest this uh, descending trend line acting as uh, resistance, form a new lower high, and then roll over, um, which is the move that we're waiting for now. The first targets will have to be this level here of 1280. If we push up here, we have to target 1280 as our first downside target. That's the first obstacle that we are going to arrive with. So once we've negotiated 1280, we can look to take out these lows and then target the D1 extension or even the weekly level of 1250. So um, that's the kind of long term overview on gold. I would like a, a further push up into the region here before waiting for price action confirmation, applying a technical entry to this to enter the market and then we can look to sell this metal all the way down to these lows here. Um, I'm going to cover oil quickly because I quite like what I see. Um, starting on the daily, starting on the daily, um, you can see that we had we were forming a very nice bullish structure um, and that has appeared, does appear to now be broken. So um, we are still being supported by this trend line, which price is failing to break below and close below on the daily. Um, and you can see how well this commodity 
um, gravitates towards staggered price action movements. So, you know, it, it moves in a very kind of staircase manner. It respects psychological levels very, very well. That's the human psychology coming into the market for you, rounded numbers. Um, now, if we just have a look at this from a weekly, and we take a fib from here to here, you can see that we're in the fib pocket and we are reversing out of the fib pocket. So that's number one. Number two, you can see here that we've got uh, these kind of bearish or um, indecision candles here. We've got spinning top, uh, spinning top, and then we've got one, two, very, very large um, bearish engulfing. Price came back up to retest this level here and then has since melted. So if we drop down to a four hour, um, you can see got head and shoulders, got shoulder, head, shoulder, and then we can now plot this counter trend line. So we've had one touch, two touch, and what we might see now is price fall back down to 60. Hopefully take out this low, take out this level here, and then have one th last drive, third drive, into this counter trend line before rolling over, and I think it would be quite a big move. Um, now, if we just drop back down to the daily. So, I'm targeting this level here of 51 Five, five. And the reason is because if I take a fib from this low to this high, look at that, you can see that this level, which has acted as a really strong level of support in the past, lines up beautifully with the 61.8 fib. That's obviously a long-term downside target, but that's kind of where I'm um, forecasting price to fall to eventually. So. Obviously, that's a long-term target. For now, we just need to pick our bias, which um, my bias is short, and then we can just wait for the market to give us a valid entry and uh, and take this take this to the downside. Um, obviously, as I mentioned, it does kind of move in very staggered. Um, kind of market structures and it does gravitate towards these rounded psychological numbers as well but uh, for those that trade gold uh, sorry trade oil um, and have the ability to trade oil um, this is definitely one to watch so okay there we go guys hope you enjoyed that market breakdown and I will catch up with you very soon